Hello, everyone out there on Podcast World. Hope you're having a great day. You're listening to or watching live Service Business Mastery Podcast. We're going to talk about something that's super interesting, and it's a topic that is one that we really tend to focus on this too late. Oftentimes, we're going to talk CSR is what we're going to talk. We're going to talk inbound. We're going to talk outbound phone call conversations and communicating with the client and really getting the leads closed as soon as you like as soon as the call gets booked, you know, as soon as it comes in, like, what's your booking percentage? Do you even know that KPI? What's a good KPI on that? It's whether it's a plumbing company, you have a plumbing company, an electrical company, HVAC, it doesn't matter. We know that it could cost $250, $350, $400 to get that phone to ring. So are you capitalizing on that? When that, when that phone does ring, are we hem hawing around about it? Is it our job and our mission to get that call closed? And then when that being said, oftentimes we hire our CSR, quote unquote, CSR is going to be sometimes like the cheapest hire last is the afterthought and everything else uh, but we're going to talk about that and we even have a few call recordings that dave did today and he's going to go through those step by step and see how we can improve those calls and yeah and go through that but i'm super excited to have dave on the show hey dave welcome yeah. to the show thank you what an honor to be on and i know josh uh I said, Josh, are you going to be here? And he said, I got to clean my sink and walk my dog. I'm really busy. I don't know what that was all about. First off, welcome to the show. We, we're super honored to have you here. And we're talking on a topic that it's one of those things I believe that it's kind of an afterthought a lot of times, or like I was saying early on, it's one of those things where we, we hire the cheapest person to answer the phones and then just like stick them over there in a the corner and maybe read this script here and there. And it could be a really dated one and, and not actually teach them how to resolve issues whenever they come up and, and rebuttals and, and that type of stuff. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. Can you first tell us kind of who you are, where you're from, and a little bit of background of you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my name is Dave Tester, and I'm the author of the book. It's called Fearless Communication, which, by the way, Tersh and all your listeners and viewers, that's going to be the value we're going to offer today is say, tell you what, we're going to give you the audio copy of it. I don't know if people have time to read anymore, so I've discovered we will give you the audio copy of and I'm uh, thrilled to be able to give that to your listeners. But I started out in broadcasting. That was my business. And probably as, as most of us at some time in our life, uh, we don't get to do that anymore. I'm not sure in my case, it would be whether I got fired or kids or whatever. But after 20 years in the business, I became an accidental salesperson. I don't know, Tersh, maybe when you were in school, you were like, hey, I can't wait to knock on stranger doors, right. and ask them for money and go, you want a furnace? How about right. a water heater? So, uh, and then later on, I discovered that there was no coaching or training and in particular in the telephone business. And when I say the telephone, referring to how do you answer the phone, what's important, all those type of things. So my first book was called Dialing Strangers, Overcoming Your Fears of Making Cold Calls. And that's for outbound. So I've discovered and listening to your show as well, that our profitable season is typically, you know, in the fall and in the spring, in the summer, it's all demand. In the winter, it's all demand. We're just run and gun where if we can book tune-ups, if we can go out and do tune-ups and then give the opportunity of repair versus replace. So I help people as far as making that tune-up call. What does that look like? And then when I started working with the CSRs, I discovered that they certainly need help. So that's a little bit of my background. Probably what makes me different than anybody else is when I do training for CSRs, we do live phone calls. I don't ask them to make the calls, but typically I'll make the call myself. And I always say it's the big five or the big six. And the big five is I should start out the call with it's a great day wherever I'm at. So it could be a great day at service bis business mastery. This is Dave. How may I help you? And no matter what they ask me, Tersh, I'm going to say absolutely. If they say, do you work on ice cream trucks? Do you work on boiler rooms? Whatever it is. Absolutely. Real quick, remind me of your first name. So I want to get the first name and then I'm going to say, Tersh, how do I spell your last name? I'm going to use your first name three times in the conversation. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I want to bond and rapport. Now, not everybody wants to bond and rapport with me, but we know if you know me, you like me and trust me, it allows me to educate you. And sometimes the CSRs, they think they're the technician. I always say, let the tech diagnose the problem. Please let the yes. tech diagnose. My only job is to convert the lead or book the appointment. 
And Tersh, one of the interesting stats is typically when our phone rings, only 25% of the people that call will book themselves. Meaning, Tersh, my air conditioner's broke. I need you to book a time for me to come in. They mm -hmm. may not use the word book. But that other 75%, we have to book and we cannot quote price because as soon as we quote price, that's code for, well, I guess I need to shop you. And that's what that looks like. So I know you asked me how it all started. That's kind of the beginning and the process. And my dad is a veterinarian. And when I was, what, in sixth grade, he'd probably get in trouble now. But back then, statute of limitations is over. I had to answer the phone. Man, if I didn't get the name, if I didn't bond and rapport, if I didn't find out what time it was and all those type of things. And I write about that in my book, The School of Hard Knocks, where in sixth grade, I learned how to answer a phone. So now, Tersh, when you have your employees and you go, don't they know how to answer the phone? Here's the answer. No. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's kind of how that's put together. But that's uh, that's where I started. And that's uh, the process. And, and that's kind of what it sounds like. Do you want to want me to smuggle in a call real quick that we made before we started? That'd be great. Yeah, let's, let's start off with that. Okay. Here's a couple of things you're looking for. One, did they get my first name? Two, did they get my last name? Did they get my phone number? Did they ask me what's going on? And did they invite me in? And here's a big one. If they quoted price, that's a real problem. Now, Terse, remember, I'm a trained professional at this, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to start out asking something that I'm going to, and I just grab random towns. And it doesn't matter whether we're in Statesboro watching Georgia Southern or if we're in Athens watching the Bulldogs, wherever we might be across the country, this is going to come across the same way. So I'm going to make the call, get all the details in here. And the first thing I'm going to say is, do you cover my area? So here's the call. TV and cooling. This is Rachel. How can I help you? Do you guys come out to Tenzin? Um, let me pull up your address and see how far out you are. And well, I'm just on, I'm just over on the other side of Worley. Do you guys come out that way? Um, let me take a look here. We do, but sometimes um, I know all the addresses out there. It kind of depends. Um, what is the address? Just so I can have an idea of how far out you are. Yeah, I'm about. Oh, I don't know. I'm just by the casino there. What do you guys charge to come out? Uh, 129. Okay. That's just for like a regular like furnace. Um, do you know uh, what kind of equipment you have? I think it's a Kinman. Do you guys work on Kinmans? By the way, Tersh, I just made that name up. I, <laughs> I remember the Kinman 1450. So mm -hmm. I just made up. I think it's a Kinman. Do you guys work on Kinmans? Um, I know we work on uh, just about anything. Is it uh, like a nap Is it a gas furnace? Yeah, gas. So, well, let me okay. do this. Let me, uh, let me ask the missus and see, cause I don't know if anybody's going to be around and then I'll call you back probably later on today or first thing in the morning. Okay. Okay. Sounds Thanks. good. And then just so you know, we are booked out. We are booked out a few weeks. So. Oh, you are. So it'd be a few weeks before you could come out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So just in case you weren't Ouch. sure, you didn't want to come here, let me make sure we're booked out three or four weeks. Now, remember, those are facts of life. But what we also coach is I've got great news. I can get you in on the 15th, the 19th or the 21st. And we approach it this way because, Tersh, what you're going to say is, can you get me in earlier? I will put you on a cancellation list. And if anything happens, somebody cancels, we'll make sure that we call you. Because I think it's more important to capture that prospect, turn them into a customer. And if I have to cancel or readjust, but now they become my customer and I can start marketing or whatever that is to them. But in this particular case, as you heard, no first name, no last name, no phone number, sort of asked for my address. And then guess what? $389 to make that phone ring. And let's pretend I needed a brand new system. Could be anywhere from $7,500 to $21,000, depending. That just went out the door. Yeah, that's that's crazy because it almost sounded like she didn't want you to get booked, like she didn't want to book you. And think, Tersh, all she had had to say is absolutely. Hey, do you come out to Tenzin? Absolutely. Remind me of your first name, Dave. Mm -hmm. Real quick, Dave, how do I spell your last name? It's Tester, T-E-S-T-E-R. Hey, just in case we get disconnected, your cell, and let's say we're working in the New York number, so we would lead. Real quick, your cell is 212, lead with their area code from that particular area, 707-9807. Mm -hmm. All right. And how did you hear about us? That's a big one that we forgot about. I mean, Tersh, I'm assuming that you spend money to get people to call you. How did you hear about us on yeah. Google? Now, make sure you know, this is your bonus because I'm on Tersh's show. <laughs> what did you see on Google? So if somebody just put you in on Google and you showed up at the top, that means they're price shoppers. However, if they said they read your five-star reviews, they're about value. 
So that kind of coaches your CSRs up as well. Real quick, tell me what the furnace is doing. Well, I set it at 71 and now it's blowing cold air. How long has it been doing that for? Would it make sense for you to invite us in? Now, I'll put them on a brief hold. And Terse, let's pretend I go ask you as my floor leader dispatcher and you go, dude, we don't go out to tens. Okay. So I put in Google and I put this always protects people's head if they go, well, what if we don't do it? And you said, absolutely. It's called Discover and Does. Tersh, I've discovered we don't go to Tenzit. However, I found out who does. Do you have a pin to write down their number? Oh, yeah, that's some extra value. Yeah, but it's Discover and Does. Tersh, I've discovered that we don't go to Savannah. However, I know who does. Or we don't go into Statesboro, but I found it. So when I coach this, I say, if somebody calls and says, do you work on giraffes? Absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> and then we put it in that position because, again, you've got to get the first name, the last name, the phone number. Real quick, remind me of your address. Put all that together. And then at some time, Tersh, I'm going to dispatch for profit. So I want to know the age of the unit. If it's two, three years, I'm going to know that that's probably a, some form of a warranty or maybe a parts. But when I get 11, 15, 21 years old, I want to figure out how to get out and diagnose that because now I can do repair versus replace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's helpful to know which technician to send out also. Oh, good. Good stuff. Absolutely. So tell me this, at what point do we start really searching and trying to get the email address? Um, So how I ask for the email address, so Tersh, real life, role play with you. So I'm going to ask the customer, I'm going to say, hey, real quick, remind me of your email. It's Tersh at gmail.com. And you're naturally going to say, no, 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 no. Here's what it is. Gotcha. And then they'll give they'll give that to us. So wherever you want the email. Now, I typically I do what I call a happy check and I coach and train this. So Tersh, as soon as I've come back from your place or as soon as you've come back from my place, I've got a person that they're going to call right away. And Tersh, here's how it's going to sound. Tersh, I'm just calling to tell you thank you. I wanted to, we just had a technician and I'll name his tech, his name. I'll say Dave came out to your location. Want to make sure you felt valued and respected. Oh, you bet. What was it in particular? Well, you guys wear the orange booties and I love that you wear the orange booties and you guys were clean and you did A, B, and C. And I really appreciate that. Sounds like you would be willing to recommend us. You bet. Hey, would it be okay if I sent you a quick link and you gave us a thumbs up or a five-star Google review? Notice how I said a thumbs up. Some people, for some reason, and it's not the client, but it's us asking for reviews. We're like, I don't like to ask for a five-star Google review. So would you be willing to send a thumbs up? And then I ask for the email and I say real quick, will you remind me of your email address? And that's how I position that. So I I put it in a way, so I'll say, and I'll give you an example if you're okay, since we're playing audio. So here's what it sounds like when I ask for somebody's email address. Sure, that'd be fine. I'm here in Walmart. I'll get get it done so I get back to the house. All right. And Lou, real quick, remind me of your email. What is that? Lou at gmail.com? No, it it spells I to estimate. It's I. So notice how I lead with their name and I ask them for, here's another one. Yeah. Sure. All right. Dan, remind me your email. What is it? Dan at gmail.com. Dan dot Stewart eight one. So notice how email. I asked for the front All of it. Right. Same oh. thing. And I, Dan, I jot oh. that down. And Levi, is it okay if I ask you for a thumbs up, a five star review? That's how we recognize Brandon. Uh sure. Okay. Um, remind me your email address. What is that? Levi at gmail.com. Uh, no, no, no. What's your name? It's Crenshaw. E-R-E-N. So notice how it's again, how I lead in with that. And that's how I get the email. So the technique is Tersh real quick. Remind me of your email. It's Tersh at gmail.com. Or if I know you better, I might say, Hey, it's the guy with the orange tie.com or whatever yeah. it might be along that lines. But the easiest way to ask for the email is there. So I ask for the email on the happy check that I call mm-hmm. it, get the five star. Now I want the technicians to also get it, but typically technicians aren't going to ask for it because they don't like to give theirs up. So that that's how so, we do it. A phone call, I could absolutely ask for your, so along with asking your cell, I could say, Tersh, real yeah. quick, send me of your email. It's Tersh at gmail.com. No, yeah. no, no, no. It's Tersh at servicebusinessmastery.com. Yeah, exactly. So with the most of the CRMs nowadays, 
we're sending everything out, all invoices and estimates and everything are sent out electronically to the client for approval and and even to be signed. So most of them have to have the the email address attached to it up front. But every now and then we find that there's somebody that doesn't have an email address or, or something to that effect. And But that is a nice conversation piece and it leads right into the, it eases up some of the conversation like, well, why do you want my email address, blah, blah, blah. And so now your happy call or your follow-up call, you you recommend performing that on every single call? I like do. Immediately? Because, yeah. Here's my philosophy. Bad news isn't like wine. It doesn't get better with time. So uh, uh, what I believe is I'm either I'm out for a five star or neutral. So a five star is you did the best stuff in the world or I'm neutral. I don't want a four star. I don't want a one star because that means there's a problem and I can send a manager, or another tech out there. So let's pretend you went out, maybe you put a full system in and something's leaking, or maybe you, the biggest one I get complaints about is, is the guys, they may have done some drilling and it's messy, or they may have done something like that along that lines. Now it gives me an opportunity to go back out there again and fix it. And I always say this, Tersh, if you like what we do, tell others, if we can ever do anything better, please tell me. I never say I'm sorry. I always say that's not like us, Tersh. We try our best. We don't always do our best. Yeah. So, because sorry to me is code for you can't do anything about it. I mean, try <laughs> well, to, sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Now I say, Tersh, that's not like us. We try our best. We don't always do our best. Would you be willing to give us a second chance to get a first impression? And thank you for your grace and understanding, because if you think about it, and this is a good note for all of your listeners and your viewers, when we hire CSRs, their two biggest fears are, one, what if somebody's mad on the phone? Two, what if I get asked a question I don't know the answer to? So if we can train them, I have the volcano theory. How do you train somebody to deal with an upset customer? And by the way, we don't have that many upset customers, but there's a, a program, it's called CNN. It's called Continually Negative News. And we <laughs> like negative news. So all it takes is one customer one time to, oh, Terse, everybody's mad today. Well, that's not really the case. And by the way, they weren't mad. They just happened to talk loud. And then the other one is you don't have to, again, you don't have to educate, help them buy. So when somebody asks me a question, do you work on Saturdays? Great question. You must be asking for a reason. Well, that's our Sabbath and we want to make sure no one comes to our home on a Saturday. Absolutely. So it just coaches you to ask questions of a question. And then when they ask you about price, well, how much is it? Great question. You must be asking for a reason. Well, I just want to know, do you guys take checks? So if I would have quoted price, you bet we take checks. And then if they say, because I want to know, you tell them it's $97. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens if you have someone who is just determined to get the price like that's almost like maybe it's a competitor trying to get the price of, of refrigerant sure. or something? Well, and I always say is so if, if you wanted to role play, Tersh, you and I can go ahead and role play and you want the price. And let's mm -hmm. just use just because, as you know, the refrigerant is so expensive. I mean, it's oh, yeah, thousand dollars an ounce. So let's let's just how much is it for a tune up? So go ahead and ask me. How much, so is how, how much is a uh, free on? Terse, that's a great question. You must be asking for a reason. Yeah, I have to have it added every year. Okay. And is price your only concern? No, but it's a major one. Okay. What else would be a big concern? Probably, I'd say quality of work. Okay. Now, remember, I've been doing this for a while. So when I hear you got to add it every year, I'm thinking there's a leak and all this right. that, and the other and go from here. But if you said, I want the price, just tell mm -hmm. them it's $97. Yeah. Okay. It's not so whatever the price. And then in the case of what you're asking here, usually we have just because we get asked that a lot, we'll have that number quoted per pound, what it happens to be that day or particular. But if, if right. somebody says, so, you know, so I asked you a great question. You must be asking for a reason. We have to add it every year. I mean, Tersh, why do you think that is? Are you guessing there's a leak in a line or what's going on? Now, I'm not expecting your CSRs to do that, but at some point they should be able to hear hmm, we might have a replace versus repair or yeah. fill here. So we want now, for that. Okay, so say you have that scenario and it's a replace versus a repair opportunity, potentially, would you ever, and maybe this is more into the coaching side of things of like a business coach, would you ever start thinking about waiving that diagnostic fee or giving the CSR the ability to, to do that? Yeah, I think what I do is, Tersh, it depends on how old the unit is. So if the unit's 21 years old, guess what? I'm going to waive it. Yeah. 
So if it's 21 years old, you bet. I'll tell you what, Tersh, I just talked to my manager. I'm not going to charge you to come out. This is a once in a lifetime deal. Because remember, today's value added is tomorrow's expectation. So I don't want everybody in the room wait. And it depends on how That's busy. So yeah. if it's 30, well, we won't use 30 below in this case. Let's say it's 110. I'm not going to waive it. But it happens to be a spring day. We're slow. It's 21 years old. I'll waive that all day long. And my owner will support me 110%. Gotcha. Yeah. How do you, I guess, how do you know the list of things to tell your CSR that it's okay to do this and that? I mean, for us, we, we get in as a business owner. If I get asked a question, I know how to respond to it. I know how I would respond to it, but there's some scenarios where the CSR is listening or is, has never had to have that conversation, or maybe the, the, there's a potential, like that's a fear of theirs. What happens if I get asked that question, like you mentioned earlier, how do we know like a list of, okay, these are the ones you kind of need to give them leeway on. I guess as long as they get the big five, they know everything. So as long as they get first name, last name, and I know, I always say, don't let the exception be the rule. Yeah. So somebody, they might go, well, somebody called and asked me about an oil furnace. I don't know what to do. Well, ask your floor lead about that. Yeah. But <laughs> Hirsch, I just coach him. Great question. You must be asking for a reason. And you told me I've got a leak. No, you didn't say you had a link leak. You said to me, I have to add it every year. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, it might not be a bad idea for us to test that line. Typically, what we do is we'll come out, we'll ask you some questions, you'll ask us some questions, and then we'll determine the next step. That could be a repair, it could be a replace, or it could be thanks, but no thanks. Tersh, I have an opening Wednesday, Thursday, or Monday. What works best for you? So I'm also closing while I'm making the statement. But the biggest thing is I would coach your team is, and, and I don't know what your parameters are, but mine would be anywhere from 10 years on up. So yeah. if, it's, if the unit's 10 years and older, I kind of want everybody to get excited. I got a 16 year old and All it's right. Statesboro. I got a 16 year <laughs> old and we're, we want to get that one. So that's kind of our philosophy there is more have them focus on age and listen for what's not being said. So rather than give you a list, well, if they bring up filter, do this. If they bring up that, do this. Now there's some common sense things in the summer. When's the last time you changed your air filter? I'm okay with telling them, why don't you go ahead and pull your air filter? Just put the blower on. That's all I want you to do mm -hmm. and see what that's doing. Well, it was four months ago and we have 17 dogs and we live by a, a dirt field. <laughs> and you're on a, you got hardwood floors yeah. and returns oh, by the floor. Oh. Yeah. But Dersh, I think I would focus on don't educate, help the customer buy, or in mm -hmm. this case, your number one job when that phone rings is to book the appointment. That's all I want you to focus on. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. How long of a process do you think it, it typically takes maybe from a green person coming in, never been in any service business, they were working at the grocery store down the street before they came on board with you until they are pretty confident in closing majority of the calls sure. that come in? Well, the first thing is I'd say it depends. Mm -hmm. If you're not interviewing your prospective uh, CSRs on the phone and recording it and listening to their tone and tempo. So the first thing I want to have good tone and tempo. I want to make sure I can hear them. It's a great day at right now, heating and air. This is Dave. How may I help you? So I'm looking number one, tone and tempo. So if they have great tone and tempo, they want to learn, meaning I'll typically, I, I give them this book. So when I interview, I'll, I'll give them the, my book and I'll say, hey, I want you to go home and read this book. And then if they come back and they haven't looked at it, that's kind yeah. of telling me stuff about them. But that being said, we have a program, it's called Jumpstart. So it's 10 30-minute videos, and I'm going to have them watch that the first week they're working for me. So it's get the big five, ask questions like, remind me how old that is, 5, 10, or 15 years old. Because most people don't know how old their system is. So if you go, how old is that? God, I don't know. About how old is that? 5, 10, or 15 years. Then it allows them to think, let's see, we moved out of here in 2012. We put So it'd be about... 10 years in that neighborhood. So you're helping them out. And then we do ongoing training every week. So I do an hour every week with all the staff because my biggest problem isn't with my new people. It's with my seniors that now all of a sudden they think they're a comfort advisor. Stop. You're not the comfort advisor. Well, I've been doing this for a long time. That's code for your old. So stop that. And then the other big thing, Tersh, is we're getting, and I'm, I'm not going to use the M word, millennial. We're getting younger people that are working for us. And I always say the magic of millennials, they want what we call micro feedback. So we have to play their calls for them so they can hear. 
So the first thing I do is I play a call. I go, tell me what you did really well here. Tell me mm. what you didn't do so well. And then I'm going to coach and train them. So, you know, when you think about it, a person in your role, you got 180 interruptions every day, 300 hours of unfinished work on your desk. And you go, I'm going to sit down with all my CSRs. So you need to ask for help. I think that's the biggest thing. But I would say within the first week, you know, if they're going to make it or not, just uh, their enthusiasm on the phone. I say, if you can get these first three lines correct, it's a great day at, and we'll just use the name of my book. It's a great day at Fearless Communication. This is Dave. How may I help you? Absolutely. Real quick, remind me of your first name. If they could just get those three things, you know, I'm in good shape. I mean, you heard the call we did uh, here earlier with this lady. Let's see. I had another one. Just so you know, I didn't just pick on one. Let's see what we got here. Oh, no, that was... Uh, we were getting Gmails. Again, do they get my first name? Do they get my last name? Any bonding and rapport? How about some empathy? Is your family okay, Tersh? I want to make sure you're warm and safe, or I want to make sure you're cool and comfortable. For excellence in customer service, this call may be monitored or recorded. New company here. Thank you for calling Mechanical. This is Candy. How may I direct your call? <laughs> You guys come out to Kellogg? Yes, we do. What's that cost to check on a furnace? You know, I am not positive how much it costs. I can get you over to dispatch and you can talk with them and see how much it costs. Oh, okay. You don't, uh, I guess I dialed the wrong number. You guys do? No, you, you didn't. Oh, okay. So you send me to dispatch. No. Okay. Send me yes, over. Yes, yes. Okay. What's your first name, sir? It's Dave. I'll give her credit there. Dave, okay, Dave, just one moment. Now, by the way, I got put on hold for four minutes on this call. So I called back. I decided I'm going to call back. And Tersh, I don't know about you, but typically when we call, they don't transfer us to dispatch, but maybe that's the system, not disagreeing. So I'm going to call back and ask the same question. Thank you for calling Anacol. My name is Lacey. How may I direct your phone call today? Oh, I think I got disconnected. You were going to tell me what it costs to come out to Kellogg? Oh, okay. Absolutely. So I'm in the service department. Um, do you need maintenance done or do you have a service call needed? Um, well, I don't know. I set the furnace at 71 and it's just blowing cold air. I was just curious what that would run. Okay. So um, uh, that is definitely outside of our normal service area. So that would be a $150 dispatch fee just for us to get on out to you. That starts our diagnostics and then we go by spot rate. Uh, pricing for the repair. And I don't know what flat rate is. What's that mean? A flat rate is the national average of time and material per what the um, what the repair is going to be. So like a blower motor or igniter or something like that uh, based on national average for time and material incorporated into it. Okay. And can you guys come out today or how far away are you? Um, I would be looking into uh, early next week for getting someone out to the Kellogg area. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Just give us a call back if you need us. Okay. All right. Bye. So Tersh, I'm sure a number of your listeners are kind of cringing because they're like, I wonder if we're doing that. So my first piece yeah. of advice is call your own office. Okay. Call your own office or have a friend call and see what's going on. There is a script. I'm sure you all have. They're supposed to call, follow the script. They don't because they don't like it. Here's what they say, because I feel scripted. Mm -hmm. well, I don't want to sound like a robot. Yeah. Well, you know, Tom Cruise, when he said this, you complete me. He sounded like a robot until he went, you complete me. Shut up. Shut up. You had me at hello. By the way, that's all scripted because a script means you're listening to the other person for when your part comes in. It's a, great, a great point. Day at Tersh's. So that's what you're doing. You're listening for, and then you're controlling the call. Mm -hmm. So notice how I controlled the call. She started talking and be careful of jargon, flat rate, igniter, went through all that stuff. Make your customer feel okay. They're already scared enough to call you. That's oh, a good man, point. That sounds like a lot of my. That's not unusual, sir. Tell me more. By the mm -hmm. way, what's your, you know, and hopefully I'm going to say, Tersh, tell me more. Hey, I think I hear a dog in the background. Because that's the other thing I train CSRs. Listen for noises in the background. That's real important. What kind of dog do you have? <laughs> that is a, uh, that is a Pomeranian Eskimo. So, you know, it really focuses them. It's a whole different thing. It becomes an art. I'm listening for noises. Did I hear a bait? Because if people like you and they know you, they're going to trust you enough to allow a service advisor to come into your home. So that's what honestly, it, it, it's, it's what I hear you describing is you're moving away from the answering the phones as a secondary or tertiary role and it becomes their primary focus like that is all they should be focusing on and 
getting very good at doing that, being the expert at answering the phone and having that initial conversation with someone instead of it being just a reactionary action. Like it's, it sounds like in the second one we listened to there, it sounded like the person was, it was just like a, uh, maybe a group of people that were all in the same cubicle and one person happened to walk past the phone and answered it. And uh, I've been guilty of doing that exact thing. So like I, I, and I, I, if you listen to my phone calls, they probably sound exactly like that. And so it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's the, the pot calling the kettle black. It's, it's totally, I'm there and listening to that call. And I don't like listening to myself talk. I mean, but listening to a phone call, it, it's, it can be cringe worthy, but at the same time, just learning from everything that you're hearing there. And a lot of times you don't realize how many times you're saying, repeating yourself, using ums, fillers, and then just over talking other people and, and, and all of that nonsense. And that using industry jargon instead of just making the person feel comfortable and letting them know that we're there for them. Yeah. First, you hit it all and think about this. Who talks to 99% of your customers and prospects? I call okay. them the director of first impressions. We call them CSRs. Mm -hmm. How much training do they get? 1% of the training. And usually it's war story training. You know, when I used to do this or it's yell and tell. So what I always encourage you is get some coaching today uh, on Tersh's show, just as value added. We're going to just say, hey, Take the book, Fearless Communication, GoDaveTester.com. Tersh is kind enough to roll that on the screen, GoDaveTester.com. And then just click on, it says connect. And all you have to do, yes, I expect something from you. I'm going to ask for your email or your address because you may want my newsletter. But just say, hey, I want the tester. I want the audio to Fearless Communication. And if you want, Tersh, I'd probably do this for the first 10 or 15 or whatever it is. Maybe it's only one or two. But if you want me to secret shop your business, I'll do that. And I'll make the call just like I did here. First thing I'm going to ask them is, how much does it cost? Do you come out to my location? And I score the call for you. And I take uh, typically six elements in the case of heating and cooling. When I work for industries where the client or the prospect comes in, there's five. But what I'll do is I'll say, uh, you got the first and last name there's a one, or you didn't get it. There's a zero. You got my phone number. You got the address. You found out how they heard about me, which is a big, big one that I notice a lot of us don't have in the script. And I go, you're going to spend all that money in marketing and you're not going to track it. Mm -hmm. One thing is if it works, do more of it. And then I'm going to make sure you said what's going on. That's part of the empathy. And then last but not least, would it make sense to invite us in? That's part of your job is to close the deal. So we'll score the call and go from there. And later on, you say, hey, the ball headed guy, not Tersh, the other ball headed guy without the hat may have something on. Tell, tell me more what it looks like. But right now, my only goal is to add value. That should be all of yours and your company. Is your prospect or customer better off after you met with them than before? If they are, you added value. That's my goal today. Tersh was kind enough to invite me on. And first thing I said, what can I do for your listeners? Mm -hmm. We'll provide you with the book. Listen to it. Some of you may not. Some of you will. But I know the 10% that do, it will increase your confidence of your CSRs by 100%. Absolutely. Dave, we appreciate it. We appreciate you sharing that. And I hope that everybody does take Dave up on that offer and listens to that, to that book for sure. You bet. You bet. Cool. If anybody has any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to Dave or myself. And if you have a question about it, I'm just going to direct you towards Dave. So just go to his website, go and uh, all this will be in the show notes as well. But I hope you, ha I hope you found value in today's episode. And I look forward to talking to you again next week on Service Business Mastery Podcast. It is a podcast focused on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves. Hope you have a wonderful and safe week. We'll see you there.